Welcome to the Environment and Sustainability Horizon Scanning Update for Q2 2023. UK Environment and Sustainability Regulatory The UK Government has laid draft regulations which will remove the current cap of £250,000 on penalties for environmental pollution offences. The Environment Agency in Natural England will now have the power to impose unlimited penalties on relevant offenders, providing a quicker enforcement method compared to lengthy and costly criminal prosecutions. However, the most serious cases will still be pursued through criminal proceedings. The new legislation also allows for higher penalties to be applied, as civil sanctions under the Environmental Permitting England and Wales Regulations 2016. This expansion of powers aims to enhance regulatory enforcement, promote compliance across various sectors, and ensure accountability for all holders of environmental permits, including companies in the energy, water, waste, and incineration industries. The draft regulations will need to be approved by both Houses of Parliament in due course before coming into force on 1 December 2023. The provision of biodiversity net gain as part of development applications is expected to become mandatory from November 2023. This requires that each application for a development subject to very limited exceptions will need to demonstrate and deliver a 10% uplift in the biodiversity value of their development site as part of the project. Following the government's consultation response in February of this year, there remain significant gaps in how the mandatory biodiversity net gain framework will operate and be applied to different types of developments and applications. However, in the absence of any contrary announcements, the start date for regulations implementing the mandatory requirement remains November 2023. Sewage sludge is residual solid waste, left over from treatment of urban waste waters, which can be beneficially reused as a fertilizer to improve soil. The new regime will mean, in future the use of sewage sludge in England and Wales will come under the environmental permitting regulations, and the sewage, use in agriculture, regulations 1989 will no longer be needed. UK Environment and Sustainability Guidance The Quality of Life Framework sets out practical steps to address the changes that can be made across the development industry to ensure that homes are acquired, planned, built and managed to actively provide a better quality of life for everyone. It covers six overriding themes, control, health, nature, wonder, movement and community. The new low-carbon concrete route map is the culmination of more than two years of work by the Green Construction Board's Low Carbon Concrete Group. The document has now been launched and is available to read from the ICE website. See link in the video description. Guide prices and information on calculating costs for developers buying statutory credits have now been issued by the government for use in England. This provides guidance for developers on the cost of buying statutory biodiversity credits. This should be seen as a last resort if it is not possible to use on-site or off-site units to deliver biodiversity net gain. The prices given are indicative to help developers plan ahead when biodiversity net gain becomes mandatory. The UK government have released information setting out what corporate disclosures on the sustainability-related risks and opportunities that companies face will be required to be reported in future. This guidance will form the basis of any future requirements in UK legislation or regulation for companies to report on risks and opportunities relating to sustainability matters, including risks and opportunities arising from climate change. Please see the link in the video description for further details. To support the implementation of the UK Hydrogen Strategy and Energy Security Strategy, the UK Low Carbon Hydrogen Standard, defines what constitutes low carbon hydrogen at the point of production. This standard sets out in detail the methodology for calculating emissions associated with hydrogen production and the requirements producers must meet to prove that the hydrogen they produce is compliant. This is a new report that provides comprehensive guidance on voluntary carbon offsetting and pricing strategies that are specifically tailored for new and existing built assets 
to better equip those who purchase offsets or make investment decisions at building asset or organizational level to align with their climate goals and accelerate the wider transition of net zero. Global Environment and Sustainability Guidance The Net Zero Industry Act was announced at the World Economic Forum in Davos in January 2023 and was proposed in March 2023. Clean energy technologies are a powerful enabler for the sustainability transition and can lead to new products and more efficient and effective ways of generating energy that can contribute to the European Green Deal objectives. This could provide opportunities for companies in terms of manufacturing of low-carbon construction materials. The International Sustainability Standards Board ISSB, has published the final version of its inaugural Global International Financial Reporting Standards Sustainable Disclosure Standards IFRS 1 and IFRS 2. The standards will allow for confidence in and comparability of sustainability reports in the way global IFRS accounting standards allow for financial reports. Companies will have to report the full scope of their emissions, including those from their supply chains, from the second year they begin to report under the standards. Saudi Arabia has completed a voluntary national review, placing sustainable development at the forefront of national priorities and fully integrating it into their Vision 2030. This is likely to influence any development in the country. This was a production of the Sustainable Construction Zone. Thanks for joining us, and see you next time.